Hello again! We are four board gamers, plus a Hawkeye this time. And we're here today with The Bears and the Bees by Grandpa Beck's Games. We'd like to thank Be Grandpa Beck for sending us a copy of this game. I'm Jen, the board game librarian. I'm Matt, the dice checker. I'm Mike. And I'm Emily, and we are Board Game Dog. So, <laughs> do we want to do the official uh, honey pouring? Oh, yes. Yes, yeah, so we must do the, the bee honey pouring. You ready, Hawkeye? <laughs> <laughs> do you like that, bud? He's, like, super fascinated by <laughs> he, it. He legit loves it. Yeah, he had some butter earlier, too, didn't you? So we'd like to thank Grandpa Bex too for the recipe that's in this game, which is different than the recipe that's in Skull Kings. Yes. So we did uh, cook up some whole wheat pancakes, uh, Mike and Emily did, mm -hmm. for the review today. Um, so we're looking forward to trying them. So yeah, we have you. not tried them yet, but thank you for the recipe. <laughs> yes. I know. Hawkeye will enjoy them too. Yes. Look <laughs> <laughs> like, like, smile. Can I like, eat this food now? Yes, I'm eating it now. <laughs> So what, do we, what would we like to start with? Our impressions first? Mike, you want to start? Sure. Uh, so the Bears and the Bees is a card-laying, color-matching game. Uh, it is the first to empty your hand of a certain amount of cards. You can play one, two, maybe three cards on your turn. You're trying to match color patterns, and the first person to completely empty their hand wins the round. You can play over a set number of rounds. The rule recommends three, and there's a score-keeping system based on who has cards left in their hand. Mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty much it. There are some additional rules that you can cover in the rule book, but it's a fairly simple game mm -hmm. yeah. from Grandpa Beck. It, it yep. was not took maybe ten minutes to read through the yeah. rule book and learn. Yeah, it didn't take long at all. Um, I liked it. Mm -hmm. I did not necessarily care for the long scoring system. I think it's a better game as a quick filler where you just play one round and the person yeah. who empties their hand of cards first is just the winner. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if I'd particularly be interested in, okay, who has cards left in their hand? This right. is how many points you score. Let's play again. Things like that. Yeah, uh, it's just like whoever's out... Is this the winner for that right. round? And they just move on. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but people that like long form games, they they may like that mm -hmm. point yeah. keeping system. Yep. And it's the setup is super easy on it too. Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's, yep. it's nothing. You just deal out some cards, put out the queen, and you're good to go. Yeah. yeah and you. So you guys. Well, let's move on to Emily. Your first impressions. Mm -hmm. Um, I was the one that learned it and very easy teaching it and I don't I do not teach games I am terrible at teaching games that's his job so um, I hear you yeah like I just I can't do it <laughs> uh, but I did this one and it was great <laughs> um, super super simple rules really easy to bust out um, it's nice and, and vibrant the look of it I love the honeycombs and the different colors um, We'll say we had a little bit of trouble. We don't have the greatest lighting in the world. So it's really hard to see the difference between the reds and the purples. Especially for this one because he's very colorblind. Yeah, I don't get to level my colorblindness as a complaint against the game though. But when all of you guys <laughs> said you also struggled with yeah. the red and purples on yeah. not optimal lighting. And right. it is a concern because there's there's going to be a lot of people that play games in non-optimal lighting. Yep. Especially yeah. potentially a filler game like this. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah, and, and going with that, this is a, a great game to bring to parties, to breweries we were talking about, yeah. to even a restaurant when you're waiting for your food. Yep. Um, super easy, family friendly. Yeah. Um, it has a great look to it. It's it's super fun. Every game is drastically different. Mm. Yeah, the, just the way you build out the hive and yeah. everything else. And I think this is one of those games that, speaking of like taking it to a brewery and things, this is going to be a game where people are going to come over and look at it. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. If you see someone sitting at a table building out this tableau, you're gonna you're gonna take a look and say, you know, what are you guys playing here? Whereas, like, you know, when we played even Skull King, for example, another great bar game, mm -hmm. but I don't think right. it's a game that's going to attract a lot of attention. Unless this... you're doing the yo ho. Sure. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, Mike wouldn't be doing that though. 
And I do, I like the colors. Like Emily said, I had mentioned earlier, it reminds me a lot of lanterns. I think, you know, once you're done with the game, when you sort of step back and look at what you've built, right. it mm-hmm. is, you know, pretty, pretty in a way. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, it is. So what were your impressions, Matt? Um, the main thing I liked about it is mainly what I'm noticing about Grandpa X games. They're accessible to pretty much everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, Skull King has a bit of a learning curve if you don't know what a trick-taking game is, True. and that's your yeah. first one jumping in. True. But then again, the other thing I want to talk about is is the rule book seems simple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Grandpa Beck puts his phone number on all his rule books, but the rule books are simple enough. I don't really need to call you him, you know? Yeah. 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 I'm just going to call him to chat with just him, chat. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm down to chat with talk Grandpa Talk recipes, Beck. talk pirates, I Yeah, know, talk pancakes. pancakes. Yeah, Fine. pancakes. I thought that uh, was interesting. Um, even if, like, one of, one of the first games we played of this, I just had a hand filled with just the standard the, the honeycomb yep. cards. I didn't have any of the special ability cards or the worker bees or the drones or the flowers. Mm-hmm. And I still had a good time with it. I didn't need to be placing down those specialty right. cards right. for the take that element. Right. Mm. And I was worried I am not someone who traditionally likes Take That. So mm-hmm. when we were originally offered this game and we looked it up and I saw that Take That was listed as a mechanic, I got a little wary. But I really feel like the Take That mechanic is just you can play a card that forces someone else to draw a card, but you get to choose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So really, it bleeds into the strategy of, oh, I know Matt only has two cards left, but Jen has five cards left. I'm always going to make Matt draw a card so yeah. that he's further away from winning. So the take that was not as bad as I thought. My major complaint with the game, I think, would be something that you spoke of, which is you don't really have a ton of control over what you draw into your hand. You know, the first game that we played, you drew all those honeycombs. I think I got four cards of the eight in my hand that let us, or that let me make you guys draw a card. Mm. So it was just constantly easy for me to play a card, you guys have to draw a card. So I'm pulling closer and I'm constantly pushing one of you guys farther away. That randomness element was a little too much for me. Um, And then, you know, we played a game shortly before filming this review and my opening hand didn't have a single B card in it. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, it definitely has that variability too in terms of how well you've shuffled. Mm-hmm. Because we last night we played a game that had no bear in it and no flowers. Yep. The one that the four of us played again today had multiple flowers, yeah. right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and yeah, it's I. So I I, I enjoyed it. Um, I feel like it's growing on me too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The three times that we've mm-hmm. played, Matt and I haven't played it as a two player. So we've played it two times at four, and one time at three. And again, I think it's 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 one of those games which I like a lot because it's non language dependent. Yep. Um, the cards are non language dependent, and. Um, it does have like a color blindness problem of sorts, which could maybe be in the purple could definitely be intensified. I think yeah. made more of like yep. a yep. a dark either darker pen. or brighter yep. or, or some other it's color. It's just very similar to it's the red. It's super similar yes. to the red. Yeah. Um I mean, it's got great symbols, great artwork. Yeah, it's um, beautiful when it's I, all laid out and everything. Yeah, I love the theme the of the bears sort. are super cute. Yeah. Um and again, Grandpa Beck seems to be nailing kind of the small filler. And I feel like, yeah. too, every t- the more and more we play this and Skull King from last time, I feel like I'm enjoying them more and more yeah. and more and finding more strategy yep. and more depth in my own personal playing. Yeah. Which I love. I love yep. that. Yep. Um, two to five players, we hadn't mentioned that yet, and ages eight and up. You could probably teach a very ambitious six-year-old. Oh well. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Yeah. That's another thing I liked about it too is, is you can you can show someone very young this game. Yeah. Yep. They can pick it up easily. Mm-hmm. Anyone yep. can play this because at the core it's kind of the color matching and yep. the um, the placements, which I I think are easy enough. Com. <laughs> is in the video easy enough? Com. Concepts to oh we're super low on those pancakes oh yeah he really wants um, easy <laughs> concepts to understand um, and again the take that is you can make it super even Stevens too yeah um, which is nice yep I think right. yep. yep you so, can just go around in a circle if you want and yep. the ability to choose I think is good yeah yeah I think so oh he's 
Yeah. Yeah, like he's that. like, I need pancakes. <laughs> um, so what did we think about the presentation? Let's start with that. Why? I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm picking different people to so, my job, I guess. I don't know. So I, I think the artwork is great. Um, it, it definitely has that real fun vibe to it. The <laughs> first time we played it, I was like, you know, I really would have liked tiles. <laughs> But the more we played it and the amount of cards in there, yeah. they would have been much more expensive if oh, there yeah. were tiles. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I do... A bigger uh, box. My, a bigger yeah. box, yeah. So oh. my first uh, concern about it really kind of died out. Yeah. That yeah. Um, it doesn't need tiles. The cards are fine. And I think they're presented well. Um, they have that nice finish to mm -hmm. them. Yep, yep. Um, and of course, uh, we, we got another recipe off the rule book. Yeah, so. I know. Yeah. Yes, and, and me for us here. Keep them coming, Grandpa. Back. I don't know. Give me recipes. <laughs> what are all the recipes that we feel like we need to discover? Uh, how about you, Emily? Yeah, I think I think they're great. Um, I didn't even think about tiles when we when we first opened them. Um, the backs are super cool. They're all the same. Mm. Um, just really really cool artwork. Um, yeah, the woven cards are are really nice. Um, they're they're a little thin. But I mean, it that, it doesn't really matter, um, and it yeah, it just it looks great. I yeah. really love it. Mike, I would have nothing more to add. I yeah. I think the presentation is good. Uh, if Grandpa Beck ever wanted to dip their toe into something more expensive and make a deluxe edition of something, a tile version of Bears and Bees might be a great place to start. Mm. Uh, it's definitely a game, like I said, is that building out presentation I think yep. would have a, a phenomenal table presence. But yeah, the, you know, and I mentioned this on the previous thing, the way the cards are, you know, we've shuffled this game seven yeah. times now in the, the amount of times we've played it. And, you know, the back of the cards, you're not seeing any white, you're not seeing any tears, nicks, anything like that. Everything's holding up well. What about you? What do you think of the presentation? Um, so, yeah, I think the artwork is super attractive. I love that Grandpa Beck up here is in a beekeeper outfit. <laughs> that is just mad adorable. It's really cute. And, again, you know, thanks for purchasing one of our family's games. We hope you enjoy playing the bears and the bees with those you love. As you play, remember, honey is sweet, but victory is sweeter. Yeah. Like, there's just... Oh, it's this, just so cute. This flavor text, yeah. and we've kind of gotten to know, um... The daughter who does the social media too. This is truly a family affair yeah. here. Yeah. Um, and I, I love that everyone is involved. Um, there's you know family pictures here. Yeah, it's you know, so cute. It's grandpa, so personable. Yeah, grandpa, grandpa, and grandma back, and the designer, uh, one of the sons there, um, and then a picture of all the kids maybe in their holiday PJs eating the pancakes. Yeah. Uh, you know. <laughs> better than that yeah. really you know you feel like you're supporting a real person yeah, real and people. um people who care about the things that they're putting out yeah. and they know what their wheelhouse is too apparently yep. which yep. is small light filler games that have more depth and potential depth yep. to them too yep um and i i deeply appreciate that yeah um, my only complaint about the com components again is just the the purple could have been more yep. Purpley. I would agree. Um, but you know the the pictures are the illustrations are great. They're super. You know you know you immediately know that this is a honeycomb. Yep. Like Emily said, the backs are really super detailed yeah, they're and fun. Um, I'm sure I put this back in the right place. <laughs> um, yeah. And then yeah. this is something again. Like I think Emily said, you could put this in your pocketbook. Yep. And take to a restaurant. And Matt and I go to breweries all the yep. time. You guys do too. Um, yeah. It, it's, it's fantastic. It's super portable too. Yep. Um, and we've done that with Skull King. We've taken it to a couple of breweries now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and we've brought just, it places. You know, it's, it's super portable. Yep. So I like that a lot. Yeah, love it. Yeah. Player count was great too. Uh, we've played it we at played two, it at three, two. four. The only one we haven't played it at five. And I thought it was equally as good at all player counts. Yeah, that's great though. Yeah. So uh, keep an eye on the channel. We will be having a learn to play with Mike. Yes. Um, we'll walk us through all the rules and all the different cards and what they do. Cool. So. All right. Are we, I think we're all set. I think we're good. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you again for watching. We appreciate you taking time out of your day watching our video. We love subscribers. Subscribers are great.
Don't feel obligated, though. I'm Jen, the board that. game librarian. Uh, Matt, the dice trucker. I'm Mike. And I'm Emily, and we are Board Game Dog. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye! Bye.